you know, there is no drastic difference between a, a 35 year old or a, you know, a 25 year old. There's, there's miles on the clock possibly, but if you've been relatively injury free and everything else like that, there's no way that you can't, you can't perform. And I, and I kind of changed my mindset completely to, to ignoring all that stuff, feeling, feeling better than ever, feeling fresher than ever. Those who live a high performance life have figured out how to consistently bring their best, their A game to the most important areas of life. On the A-Game Advantage podcast, you'll get to peek inside the mind of the world's highest performing individuals so you can learn and model the mindsets and systems that allow them to bring their A-Game every day. With your host, Elliot Rowe. Welcome to the A-Game Advantage podcast. I'm your host, Elliot Rowe. The A-Game Advantage is brought to you with Primed Mind, my mindset coaching app to help you make the most of your life. Check it out at agameadvantage.com slash primed. This week, I interviewed rugby superstar James Haskell. He's played for the Lions. He's got 77 caps for England. And he spoke to me about the importance of mindset in rugby and also other aspects of life and how it's helped to propel him to the top. He also spoke about social media and how he's managed to um, ignore the haters online and really make sure he keeps a positive outlook when dealing with the public. So without further ado, let's uh, jump into that call with James. And today, a very special guest on the show. Uh, we've got James Haskell, uh, who's come to talk to us. Uh, if you don't know who James Haskell is, he's an international rugby player. He's played for England 77 times. He's played from the Lions. Uh, he's authored a couple of books, and uh, he even does some DJing at the weekends. So very interesting guy we've brought on to talk to you today. So James, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So let's start off with the rugby. Uh, seems to make sense. So um, thinking about your rugby career and how you got started, what did it look like for you? You know, what age were you starting, and yeah, how were things? It's a, yeah, it's a bit of a bizarre situation, really, because I actually never wanted to be a rugby player. Um, my kind of my dream was to either drive a digger uh, or be in the special forces. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, my mum and dad said the amount of money they spent on my education, I wasn't allowed to become a digger driver, um, <laughs> and uh, my dad was convinced. I'd get shot if I tried to go for the special forces and I probably wouldn't have got in. So I, I kind of um I'd always play rugby from from an early age when I was uh when I was about five, my mum signed me up to the um the kind of local rugby club um and lied about my age and kind of put me up for the under sevens and I, you know, kind of got involved there and I, I played at that club specifically till I was eighteen. Uh, and I kind of went through, um, I, I went to kind of a couple of good schools that played rugby particularly. And uh, I kind of fell into it really. And I, I trialed for England under 16s, uh, which at the time was obviously the be all and the end all. And I, and I got all the way to the final trial, but I didn't get in. And um, that was kind of my first real setback and disappointment in life. And, and, and uh, luckily, a family friend was kind of a, a personal trainer. And one of the reasons I didn't get in was that I hadn't done any of the extra fitness work, I hadn't been committed, I was too busy chasing girls. Or, or messing around like most people do and um you anyway, know my old man kind of said to me look you know you can see this as a disappointment or or you can you know use it as an opportunity to come back better and I started training with this guy uh, when I was about uh, 15 and just kind of got uh, obsessed with it in the following kind of a uh, year and a half I got into the England under 18 side and once you're kind of on that radar and playing I got picked up by wasps and I applied for university and they kind of offered me a, a year's contract to um to become a, a professional rugby player and paid me good money and most lads were on going on gap years and and, and sort of not have uh, you know not earning any money and I said you know what I'll give it a go for a year and 16 years later I'm I'm still doing it and no one's worked out that I don't actually want to be a rugby player <laughs> and you did get a big digger as well didn't you i have actually got a digger at the moment unbelievable I, i'm one of these people that um uh my girlfriend rolls her eyes actually so my fiance rolls her eyes um a lot of the time when i uh when i do these things because i'm kind of the ultimate man's man you know i i dj as you said um you know i turn that into kind of a from a hobby to a to a job which is quite cool um, i'm obsessed with technology so i spend a lot of my money on on um drones and you know gopros i love cars I, I shoot it i go shooting um and i've got a digger on my on my driveway i, I started doing some work with jcb years ago and, and it's an obsession from a kid really i i my mum used to kind of push me around in a pram um when i was being a nightmare and, and sort of take me for a walk and she used to park me up and i used to look at the, the the road works and it's kind of got into my head so even now at the age of 33 i still look at all the diggers on the side of the road and and i've kind of got my own one for a 
a short period of time. Well, they think they're getting it back, but they're never getting it back. Um, and I've, been, <laughs> I've got my license and I've been doing loads of work on some, some neighbor's house. He pays me in, uh, in cider, which I can't drink in season, but I'm, um, you know, it's all in all the of crime. But at, at the end of the season, we've, we've got a bit of fun to have then. Yes. You know, I've, I've, my, my, my years of kind of fun have, have changed dramatically. And you know, they went from kind of the age of 21 to, to 26, going to Vegas every year, you know, at the end of the season to, you know, much more respectful holidays now to, I mean, well, Ibiza is not that much more respectful, but going to Ibiza and kind of resting because as I get older, you kind of need to take your downtime. You can't end up coming off holiday in a worse state than when you went. And and how important would you say over the years? Because obviously we're we're all about mindset and trying to become the best in the world here. Uh, how important do you feel mindset has been in your rugby year, career throughout the years in, in terms of the success you've had and reaching this very highest level? Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think that if it wasn't for um, mindset and uh, mental development and the focusing on that side of the game, I don't think I'd be where I am today. I don't think I would have achieved half those. Uh, half of those things I think it's something that's hugely overlooked in, in every area of life any sport any discipline you know we spend all the time on nutrition and supplements and, and training and food and everything else and we very rarely look at the, the the brain and that's kind of all the mental side of things and that's the most powerful stuff so you know I've obviously worked I worked for years and I still I still ha- you know um do with a uh, with a sports psychologist um and obviously you know he kind of in the last well, is it last year or last eight months? I've kind of working with with obviously yourself, um, you know, with the prime mind stuff, and it's been yeah, it's been incredible. And I and I think it's it's one of those things that people, you know, if you're going to write a list out of stuff to focus on, you know, um, people always literally talk about all the equipment, uh, my my nutrition, my physiotherapy, my everything, and not often at the bottom of the list it's oh, I'll, I'll speak to my psychologist or I'll speak to my therapist or I'll, or I'll do that. And the mindset stuff is the key and it helps you organize achieve focus um you know get peak performance transform uh, average performances into great performances dealing with with failure with loss with stuff off the field understanding where to where to perform you know and and is it something because you know it sounds quite interesting obviously my background of being in this it seems incredibly important to me but you say it's, it's a little bit further down the list for a lot of rugby players is it something that you've seen as a weakness in different teams where you see players like start to mentally break and not deal with this side of the game oh 100 percent. you see it every day of the week you see you see you see teammates who are you know who go through personal things like we've all got personal things you can't control it whether that's you know, loss of, of family members, a breakup of relationship, breakdown of relationship, stress, kids, uh, whatever it might be. Um, you know, but even simple things like that, dealing with that, how to how to compartmentalise between their, their off field life, their on field life, how to drive performance. Um, you know, we I don't know. I think it's probably because it's more uh, communicated, but certainly rugby world. You know, back in the day. Um, you know, when I very first started working with my psychologist and some of the stuff that sports psychologist, some of the stuff we talked about, you know, which was using music as a tool, uh, writing notes before games, before performances, um, you know, filtering out feedback, whatever it might be. I, you know, I came up against a lot of criticism from the old school heads of of people, you know, we well, shouldn't be listening to music. You shouldn't be making notes. You know, don't write this. You don't need that. Don't worry about psychology. Don't, you know, you're overthinking it. You're overthinking it. And, um I just think it's it's now changing, and I think you know different generations require a lot more managing, and I think that's why you see successful coaches. You understand uh, what players need the carrot, what players need the stick, uh, what players need the little arm around their shoulders and the motivation, um, and that's kind of the same in in business life and in, 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 and also in any sports or any desire to kind of perform. Um, people in charge need to understand the individuals in their organisation, but also the individuals need to, to to realise that they've got to constantly keep developing themselves and that, you know, no man is an island, as, as they say, and you've got to constantly keep kind of developing that, that mindset. No, I, and obviously, in, really interesting to hear as well. And you know, when when you think about that period when when we met and, and started working on your rugby, um, so it's sort of that post that being dropped from the England team and being told, "Hey, James, you know, we're not sure what your future in England will look like moving forward." How did that feel to you, and what did that do, confidence wise, and 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 really rugby wise? Yeah, I mean, look, obviously. I think uh, one thing I've always done, and, and obviously pre yourself, and, and now post you, is obviously understanding how to deal with the different the disappointments uh, and everything else. And and you know I don't care what people say uh, in the media or in the world. Nobody's impervious to this. Nobody uh, has such a thick skin 
that they don't have moments where they take disappointment, take criticism. Um, you know, I'm one of these people that like, you know, wants likes to be like. Unfortunately, I've got a personality that's a bit like Mark. You either love me or you hate me. So, so it's something I've always had to to to, to come to terms with being an extrovert as well. You know, and being out there, you put yourself out there. You kind of got to be prepared to, to to take the heat. So those constant things have been interesting, and to have. To have the coach, you know, come to yourself and say, "Listen, we're not going to select you for the, kind of the first time in 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 his kind of reign, but probably only the third time ever in my kind of international career." Um, and that it looked like the door was pretty closed. It was it was interesting because, you know, I know your 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 brother who who kind of you know had, had, had you know done a lot of my tattoos. He's an amazing artist, and he'd always talked about you. And you know, I wasn't really sure about stuff. You know, I was working with someone, and I was kind of happy. And it was one of those things where we talked a few times, and I, I said to my myself you know it was down at the you know the bottom of my list of kind of things that I was going to do I wasn't you know people are scared of change I didn't want to necessarily throw something new into the, to the mix and you know it was basically my 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 missus who would um was talking about different things we kind of wrote down a list of ways I could try to get back into the English squad and improve and, and I thought one area that I haven't changed that I haven't looked at that I haven't updated was my updated was my mindset stuff was my performance um and that's when I picked up the phone to you and I, and I you know and we started talking and I, and I kind of from the very first session saw the value in it saw it, it was a different approach and you know everything with a kind of a in most cases a new broom kind of sweeps clean and, and kind of helps you uh you know when there's something's new and fresh it kind of exciting but but as we work through I saw the the depth of importance the benefits of it um and I think that's just that's kind of the way it, the way it's gone. And, and I think you can feel very despondent about being left out. You can see it as, well, you're faced with the options of, you know, do I listen to what this bloke says? Do I give in? Um, you know, it's been kind of a difficult year for me anyway through injury and, you know, not performing as I would want on the field. And it come, becomes quite a lonely place when you're not um, when you're not performing well. And I think having good people in your team to kind of help you and uh, and little. Um, exercises and triggers and etc cetera, etc cetera, to kind of help you get through those bits are are essential because I always liken it to you win a game uh, and you get uh, 50 messages from everyone right everybody messages you so good you're so good right when you get left out you don't get selected your mum and your fiance message you and that's and that's it and that's what you will always remember that when it's good it's great when it's not when it's not so bad you count the people on your on your kind of one hand. So it's really important that you are mentally reliant on yourself and also working with good people to get that mindset correct because and that's why social media is so dangerous is that if you live your life spuriously through social media and, you know, you, 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 you validate yourself by what other people are telling you and people are pumping up your tires, <laughs> when, when the social media and your phone switches off at night, you're left with your inner monologue, you're left with your inner, you know, your inner thoughts, your inner mindset. And if, if you're not working on it, then you can very quickly fall apart. And, and that's why I kind of think with us working, it kind of came at the perfect time and, and the proof's kind of been in the pudding, really. Yeah, I mean, we. I mean, first of all, let's laugh about the fact I can understand some concern about being recommended a mindset coach by your tattoo artist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Brother, right. it's not the most. Uh, shout out Matt Rowe Tattoos. Check out his website. Good stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's something where it's always fun for me when I have a new client come to me with a very specific goal. And we had the goal of, hey, I've you know had the talk from the manager. It doesn't look like I'm going to get back in the England squad. We need to get me back in the England squad. And how did it feel, you know, going through that whole process that we went to of, look, okay, how do we do this? We aim for man of the match every match and we make it so it's impossible to be ignored moving forward. You know, how was that as a process for you? Well, what I thought was, what I thought was, was kind of unique about your, your process and, and, you know, it was kind of the fact that we obviously adjusted the goal, but, but like anything, you've got to come kind of, uh, deal with what's in front of you, especially in professional sport. Um, you know, they, they, it's, there's always, I think, people always talk about the goal setting and it's, it's, it's essential to have a place where you want to target and that might be a long-term goal. And then you kind of have your, your shorter-term goals, but you've almost got to have your, your, your daily goals, which were, you know, less address you know, let's peel things back. So that's all we know we want to get to, but let's actually address how we're going to get there. What's, what's happening? You know, what's your thought process? What, you know, why are you, why are you doubting yourself? Where, where, you know, why are you not as confident as you should be? You know, what areas of your game can we improve that will ultimately lead to you fulfilling your, your, your proper goal? And that's, and that's what people forget. They, they sometimes want to 
you know, go to, uh, you know, straight to Z, but they don't do the A, B, C, Ds. And we went straight back to the beginning. We're like, right, let's look at A. Let's look at why, you know, why are you not feeling that confident? Why are you not doing this stuff? Why are you not, uh, you know, uh, and just talking back and addressing that kind of stuff, I think was really, was really important. And obviously meaning that you were addressing the, the, or giving me the tools or we were working on the tools or reconciling my mind how I wanted to picture what I did. And, you know, people talk about visualization and it's, it's something that I've done but not, not the way we've done it and also not as religiously as we've done it. And it's kind of one of those things where you know, knowing every week I've had a session where I've gone through things where I've visualised what I'm going to actually do, how I'm going to achieve it, that realising what I decide to do is a choice as opposed to anything else, that's that's hugely powerful. And that and that can be not just necessarily in sport, but you know, if you've got to try to do a presentation at work or you're trying to even if you're you know, playing poker, whatever you're doing, you know, being understanding those pressure situations, realising that you know, a lot of stuff are – you know, chemical impulse in the brain or perceived situations that aren't really even there. And it's down to your interpretation of these and that you can actually change that interpretation very quickly and make it far more positive. Yeah, I, I think the reframing of these sorts of things is really, really key. And certainly the idea of, you know, when when you've had some negative feedback, I've seen a lot of athletes after negative feedback really get down on themselves, in some ways start to believe it and then start to perform to that level. And then we reframe things, we use those visualization techniques, we work through it. And then very often... I see their performance go back to exactly as it was before the negative feedback. And is that something that you felt as well? I have, but I actually feel like it's, um, you know, I, I was, well, I mean, I was becoming very accepting of, of what people were telling me about myself. Oh, you're old. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. This is your, you know, and I, I've completely changed that now completely. I feel, you know, the limited look it, at some point in, in any sport, or any professional career, there's the tipping point of, but physical ability versus the desire. You know, we, we know when you reach a certain age, 60, 70, you'd love to be doing what you were doing when you're 30, 20, but, but it's never going to happen. The, the point is, is that with, with sport and everything else like that, you know, there is no drastic difference between a, a 35 year old or a, you know, a 25 year old. There's, there's miles on the clock possibly, but if you've been relatively injury free and everything else like that, there's no way that you can't, you can't perform. And I, and I kind of changed my mindset completely to, to ignoring all that stuff, feeling, feeling better than ever, feeling fresher than ever. Um, you know, going into trainings, go, you know, not with any doubt. That I can't, that I can't perform, that I can't achieve, that I can't be the best player I can be, and you know, I've, I've, you know, I don't want to talk myself up, but it, but in terms of even just basic metrics, you know, going away with the England squad when I did get back in, you know, beating previous records that I hadn't done, you know, beating people younger than me, um, you know, in terms of you know basic things, um, and and that you know that's important because if everyone's telling you you're done, you're finished, you're old, you can't perform, you know, you're not quite there. Injury stopped you. You know, it's very hard not to let any of that creep in, and and uh, it, it's a very hard thing to do, and it's a constant battle. And I think you know, for most people now, we don't just get that kind of stuff from our employers or our teammates or our competitors. You know, we get that on social media as a sports person. You get that from everyone. Everyone's got an opinion these days, and sadly, everyone you know assholes so opinions are like assholes everyone's got one and then everyone thinks theirs doesn't stink and that's the problem and, and everyone forgets that kind of perspective and, and how did that feel like ending up at the england camp again and actually seeing that yeah i'm beating my previous records here so things that i've been you know judged on in the past even at 33 years old i'm now doing even better than i was when i thought age might be a limiting factor yeah i mean it, yeah it was it was um it wasn't surprising because I, I knew I could do it, but it was just uh, it was just confirmation that what what I was doing was working, what I was doing with you was working. Was that you know that a lot of this stuff is a choice, and that a lot of it is belief, and how powerful is the mental state? How powerful is that? Because it's you know nothing drastically changed. You know I was doing you know I, I was addressing the bits I needed to do off the field in terms of the physical stuff. So you and I would talk about. The wanting to play like, uh, like do like a certain thing, so I went away and I practiced tackling like that. I practiced carrying like that. You know, we talk about acceleration. I did my mobility. I, th- I thought about running fast. I thought about doing that. I thought about accelerating, and that and that kind of kind of kind of all worked into one. It's it's a, it's a, it's a it's kind of all about putting all the pieces together. And there's no miracle. You know, you can't make someone who wasn't you know uh, an amazing athlete an amazing athlete. But what you can do is help um, people you know, unlock that ability to to perform, to feel confident, to understand that what they believe to be 
reality is not their reality. Your reality is is what you believe and how you do it within within reason, and and, and it's a massively powerful factor. And as I said, people look at physical action as opposed to mental action, and and I wonder how many sports people or how many people would have had more success or, or in my teammates and people who if they'd spent more time on the mental side would would have achieved stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, I see it. Obviously, I work with combat sports as well, and so many fighters and boxers are quick to say, you know, oh, it's 80% mental. And, you know, I'll say, okay, so how much time are you spending working on your mental? Yeah, well, you know, half an hour a week. <laughs> you know, was, yeah, <laughs> you just think, okay, so you're training, you know, four hours a day five hours a day and then you give half an hour maybe to working on your mental state and i I think it's the same with a lot of sports especially high pressure sports where people are sort of aware of it innately but then they don't necessarily want to put in the time and effort to to really resolve those things. exactly i I I couldn't agree more and it's because it's you know it's easier to uh i find it's easier you know it's easier to pick up a dumbbell or go and kick a ball or, or or punch a bag than it is to to sit with someone or to address things or to take five minutes. I mean, the, the, the madness is that I was always, you know, always told by myself, you know, to do visualization and I, and I had ideas and I, in, about what, and I would do it. I would do it. Not very often, but I would do it. But then you think, how much time do you waste on your phone pissing around looking at stupid cat videos or, stuff on Instagram <laughs> or playing games when if you just spent that 10 minutes, you know, centering yourself, doing some visualization, you know, or, or meditate, whatever it might be, would, would make a huge difference. Yeah, I mean, and it's been great. And then, how did it feel getting in getting in that England shirt again? So, um, proving those naysayers wrong. How was that over the last Six Nations? Yeah, it was incredible um, and kind of uh, you know very emotional for me. <laughs> but as is the as is the life of a professional rugby player, you, it's not about getting there. It's about performing when you're there. It's about the next job. So, so you know, it's great because when I spoke to you, obviously, you know, the excitement of achieving the goals and what Chloe said, and you know, my who's my, who's my fiance, you know, she was so emotional about the whole process. Um, the next day after I started the game, because she said that you just don't realise what you've achieved. So many people give up. So many people don't get a chance to go back. And, and, and not only do you come back, but you, you know, you 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 played your heart and did what you could do. And I think for me. Uh, you know, I took a minute. I don't normally take a minute, but I did take a minute to, to to kind of appreciate that and enjoy it. But then I'm on to the next thing, uh, and I'm ringing you up. And we're talking about right, what can we do next? How can we improve that? How can I get better? And I think probably one day when I've retired, I think as most people do, it's just to have a minute in it and look at what I've got because you're always hungry for more, and it's never good enough. But you know, if you'd asked me seven months ago, would I have loved to just be in the training camp? <laughs> I would have been your arm. <laughs> now I'm there. I want to be back in there. I want to make the summer tour. I want to keep playing well. I, you know, I, I want to perform, and that's that's the, that's that's the way it goes. But you just got to kind of appreciate stuff. Oh man, it's been a ton of fun being being along for the ride on this one. It's been a really fun few months. Um, and and something I wanted to talk to you about as well because I think it does impact people's mindsets a lot. And that's the the being in the public eye. I mean, for those of you who don't know, you know, James got engaged recently. He's been in Hello Magazine this weekend. Very very high profile. Um, how do you deal with the negativity that comes from that? Because it always does. Because it's one of the questions I have, you know, people holding themselves back from becoming famous because they're scared of that judgment. How have you dealt with that over your career? Uh, well, I mean, the first thing first, if I listened to all the negative people and did what everybody said, I never would have left the house uh, and I never would have done anything. Um, I think that, uh, you know, feedback uh, and stuff from anyone is, is, is always great for personal development. But you have to filter and have to choose very carefully who you choose to take that feedback on. And that's the first thing. You know, if you're, if you're respected people that you look up to have a proven track record of what they're doing are saying that you're doing something wrong or criticizing, then, you know, it's worth having a time of day. If, if, you know, Nobed 35 on Instagram or social media is commenting on you, it says far more about them than it does about you. And I, and I just think that social media is an amazing tool, but it has brought the worst out in human nature. It's, uh, you know, it's 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 created zero boundaries, and I, and, I, and I firmly believe it's it's the start of the end of the world kind of thing without being overly dramatic, just because it's just encouraged the, the worst parts of human nature to, to to come out. People are just writing stuff, saying stuff, doing stuff um, for absolutely you know for for likes for for comments you know people are injuring themselves eating you know chili peppers and tide pods and all this kind of shit and snorting condoms because 
they're desperate for views and people are writing the most horrific stuff. To, and I just think you have to take a step back from that and you have to realize very clearly that you get one opportunity in life and there's no dress rehearsal. I'm not a religious person, but I can tell you as far as I can see, unless you believe you're coming back as a caterpillar or you think we're all in a matrix or we're all, you know, reptilians or whatever it is that people are believing these days, you got one chance at it. And, you know, you should never hold yourself back because other people are criticizing you because, you know, a lot of people who, who do body shaming stuff on social media, you look at their profile. Firstly, They've never got a photo of themselves, which tells you one thing. They're ashamed of their body, so they're attacking other people. Or they've got loads of profile pictures of cats um, uh, because, again, you know, animals aren't, animals aren't going to hurt them, aren't going to be rude to them. So they surround themselves with animals, not real people, because they're, they're not comfortable. And you can see straight away that people are, are, are not happy with themselves. So anyone who ventures out and volunteers information and says stuff is just – she should just not be listened to. And I, and I firmly believe that, you know – it, you, no one's life, no one's goal in life, I, and I don't. I think this is right. Should not be to be famous. You should want to be successful in your chosen field, and if that happens to lead to fame, then that should you know, that is a byproduct. I don't think anyone should ever set out to be famous because I think it it, it, it lacks substance, it lacks it lacks direction, and it's a very fickle a fickle thing. I think social media can be used as a great tool for sharing for business development. It needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. You've got to remember that, uh, you know, I was always going to post what I was going to post, even if every comment was negative, because it's my social media. It's a privilege to follow people. It's not a right. And um, you just have to have that mindset. mindset. If you've ever been held back because of that, you know, just take five minutes to look at the people who were saying this and believe, would you actually give a shit if these people talk to you in the street? Would you value their opinions? You know, and if you don't like it that much, then, you know, don't, just don't put yourself out there on social media. Uh, do it in different ways, but just never, never, ever detract from the goal. No, your your goal and purpose in life, whatever you're trying to achieve, should be very simply be about being the best version of yourself, being the most successful you can be in your chosen field, and fuck what everyone else thinks, and and you know, and let them worry about themselves. Because trust me, everyone's got problems, and nobody's life is perfect. Um, and you know we're only here for a short time, a blink of an eye, and then you and then you're dead. So <laughs> make the most. <laughs> Don't worry about social media. I'd love it if um, people had to use their real names on social media. I think I think that would be the that would be the best step forward. I just think any. I just think that um, you know you, you I, again you know we talk about this as a whole separate kind of podcast, but I, I just believe that all these kind of people, uh, these businesses, Twitter, Instagram, and everything else, people talk about freedom of speech, and you know it's a very fine line between censorship and everything else, but. I think if you're homophobic, if you're racist, if you're uh, uh, aggressive, if you if you're drug, I just don't think you should be allowed. On. I just think you should be banned. I just think anyone purveying any hate, we just world doesn't need it. It's enough of that going on without people broadcasting it. The very fact that you've got you know, the internet as a whole opportunities for people to you know create websites on how to you know be anorexic or people to insult people or to provide hate. You know that's all it needs to tell you about other people's opinions. Just crack yeah. on with yourself. Be the best you can be. Earn a fuckload of cash and uh, enjoy your life. <laughs> and have, have some fun. Yeah, agreed, certainly. Um, and, and something else I wanted to, to chat a little bit about as well is like your interest in nutrition and fitness. So I know that's the basis of the books that you've released. And uh, how much of a part of your life has that become now that you're you know starting to help other people reach their goals? Yeah, I mean, it's massively important. I think from, from again, you know, the, the mental side is one thing, the, the, the fitness side, um, the health, your personal health, again, is every day is about trying to be the best player you can be, you know, um, or the best performance athlete you can be. And, and you know, diet's such an important thing. You know, uh, you don't put diesel in a Ferrari in the same way. I'm not calling myself a Ferrari. I'm more of a, probably a Range Rover Sport, slightly busted up, I'd say. Um, seven careful owners uh, is what I'd Um <laughs> And uh, I think it's important to understand that. And, and I, the reason I set up my whole fitness business and did everything with my my new book, Perfect Fit, and all this kind of stuff, was because people were constantly asking me about stuff. And that's the beauty of social media when it does work. It's it's a, it's a kind of a window into other people's lives. It's the ability to share information and share stuff. And I was I was consistently a- answering people's individual questions about food, about nutrition. And I decided that I, I wanted to set this all out. And I wrote a rugby. Uh, kind of a rugby guide for um, for young kids and, and or any players, really male or female, understanding kind of the basics of being a professional rugby player or, you know, and, and diet wise. And then with my new book, I kind of took it to the next level. And, and it's really important to share people stuff because, 
No one ever facts checks anything anymore. There's fake news everywhere. No one looks into anything. And there's lots of false false prophets and false idols to, to follow and, and, and all this kind of stuff online. So I just wanted to create something that was really authentic, that was based on my experience, that was no nonsense, very direct, very honest, uh, covered every possible thing you could you, you could want to do, fat loss, muscle gain, and, and help people understand that actually – Whatever anyone's selling you, you can't get away from hard work and commitment. And until they invent a magic pill that makes you massive um, and uh, rips you up and everything else like that without you having to lift the weight or leave the house, you know, it's all about hard work. Yeah. And and with that sort of the pushing people for hard work, when you explain that, you know, there is no magic bullet here. If you want to be good at rugby, you have to put in the hours. If you want to get fit and healthy, you've got to put in the hours. How do you find people respond to that sort of honest approach if you're not selling them this this magic bullet, this key to success? I think people find it very hard. I think uh, humans always uh, take the path of less resistance. You see it everywhere. It's, it's the dividing factor between those who are successful and those who aren't. That's, that's, the, that's the reality of it. It's, it's, you know, obviously there is a, you know, a, a huge diver, um, division of wealth across the world and, and across with people. And, and obviously, uh, you know, that plays a massive role. But actually, you know, hard work, dedication to what you're trying to do, um, a bit of suffering um, is, what, is what makes people, you know, successful. And, and I think that a lot of people will read it and will start the book and give up. But but it's the people who are committed who 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 will get the results at the end of the day. But these are the people who aren't committed will be buying my book this week, will be buying someone else's next week, will be paying for an online course, will be doing it, and they false start and everything in life because they don't they don't commit to what they're supposed to do and give it a, a, an appropriate amount of time and understand that you know what you can't eat donuts and cakes and get in shape. You <laughs> can't, can't you know you can't be a successful fighter if you don't train. You can't you know you can't be good at business. If you're not putting the hours in after work, if you're not committed to it, if you're not reading up and around your area of interest, because you know other people are, and you'll just get left behind. Yeah, I think it's it, almost everything comes down to, you know, the case of are you willing to do what the best people in the world do? And it's been good to have you on talking about that. You know, the level of commitment, what it takes to go through some difficult times, bring yourself back, get yourself back to the top level. That's why you've reached the top in rugby. That's why you're still there now. And I think that's why a lot of people just fall backwards is they don't have that commitment to say, okay, it's pretty pretty obvious what you need to do to become the best but I actually have to copy that and I have to put that work in. Yeah. I, I, I just think that, you know, you can always take things back to the most basic form of, of trying to uh, be successful. And I think what, what you've got to try and do is, is, you know, if you're coming out of a, of a giant hell hole of, of, of trouble or strife or disappointment, there are ways out of that by very, by very easily looking at things in a very compartmentalized fashion by making as simple as making a list and addressing the bits that you need to, 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 to focus on. And then, you know, by all means, look for people for inspiration. Um, never look for people to try to motivate you because, you know, motivate, motivation comes from yourself. It doesn't come from other people. You know, people can inspire you, but people who ring up, you know, I get messages all the time from people. Oh, I've had this, I've had that. I need some motivation. And I have to stop myself time. But fucking motivate yourself, mate. Like you either want to be, you either want to be successful. You don't like me telling you, go, go, you know, go, you know, top. go for a run. Yeah. yeah. It's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not gonna help you. And, um, I think, it's, I just think it's, it's really important that whatever you do, it's, it's focused work. It's, um, an enjoyment of what you're doing. It's, um, you know, doing a bit of research around your project, that, that extra commitment to it and realizing that, you know, the excuse of, I don't have enough time is very much just an excuse. Um, because, you know, especially with the advent of, of, of um, smartphones, we literally waste our lives away on those bits of kit when, you know, reading reading a book on a subject that you really want to, to be good at, you know, 10 minutes before bed, 10 minutes lunchtime, 10 minutes before breakfast, you know, to really help you advance yourself or taking 10 minutes to train or 20 minutes to train. You know, all of these things are, are, are possible. We just should choose not to do them or we convince ourselves that we can't. Yeah, it's... Um certainly you know read a book don't worry about taking a photo of the book and putting it on instagram yeah <laughs> like that's that's also if anyone else is listening please you go to a concert or a gig or an event enjoy the event don't watch the event through your phone uh, you're never going to use the footage anyway and nobody gives a shit online 
I, 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 I think the funniest one for that is fireworks. People who you go to a fireworks display, who is ever going to rewatch a fireworks no, no. display on their phone? I know. I, I went to watch. I took my my, my uh, fiance to Paris, and um, we went to. We were seeing the Mona Lisa she'd never been, and everybody was photographing and filming the most Mona Lisa instead of looking at it. And I was like, why? Why are you going to? There's plenty better versions of. The phone lease online. If you're that desperate to relive the situation, but I can't understand why you're taking a picture of it again. You're not going to look at it and go, "There's a Mona Lisa." Yeah, yeah. It might look on it online. Like I don't understand. It doesn't doesn't make any sense to me. But that's what people do. We're all all a bit addicted to the phones, but really, I mean, really great stuff, James. And thank you so much for coming on today. If people are interested in finding your books or finding you on social media and things, with all this talk on social media, um, where can they find you? Um, so my Instagram's um, James Hask, and that's H A S K um, is, my, is the way my surname is. Um, if you go to my website, that's www.jameshaskell.com, and, and Haskell's H A S K E W L dot com. Uh, my my book Perfect Fits available on Amazon. It's available around the world on and an ebook. And uh, I've got a Facebook page under James Haskell Health and Fitness J H H F. So I'm on I'm on those social media stuff all the time. Um, kind of either posting funny, stupid videos of me taking the mick out of my my fiance or, or me messing around, um, or giving health and fitness advice or rugby stuff. So you know I'm always open to questions and advice, and, and if I can help anyone, I, I will. And um, all of you Americans out there listening to this, if you haven't seen rugby before, go on YouTube, type in James Haskell highlights and have a look at what rugby is. I think a lot of American football fans would actually love watching rugby as well. Very, very fun sport to watch. A lot of action. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can get a few extra, a few new rugby fans as well out there uh, checking the sport out. Well, man, once again, thank you so much for coming on. And um, we'll put some links to those things on the podcast page. We'll, um, I'll probably bully you at another point in the future, James, and have you back on again. Perfect. I'll be back soon. Cheers, guys. So always a pleasure to talk to James. He's a ton of fun and a very kind of him to come on the show today. Uh, if you're interested in checking out his books or any of the other things that James has got on offer, what we'll do is we'll put those links on the podcast page so you can check those out. I'll also look for a rugby highlight of him as well. Um, so we'll add that as well. And that'll be fun for, for those of you who've never really watched professional rugby. You'll get a good idea of what rugby is all about. Um, hope you all enjoyed the show. And we'll be back next week with another exciting guest.